Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. In this video, I'm going to talk all about a recent uh, paper that just came out a couple days ago. Uh, it's a review article titled Earth's Ice Imbalance. So this uh, paper discusses uh, observations and satellite data on all of the ice around the planet. The ice sheets in Antarctica, the ice sheets in Greenland, the sea ice in Antarctica and the Arctic, the glaciers on mountaintops, and uh, it discusses the, it looks at uh, all of the mass loss from these different components and also how much that will affect sea level rise. And, uh, you know, it considers the, what's unique about this review is that it looks at the entire planet. It looks at all of the ice on the entire planet. I shouldn't say all of it, actually, because it doesn't cover, there's not enough data on lakes and rivers, for example, so they're not really included, but they do discuss their estimates for that as well. So that's the key part of this video. Um, just a couple uh, personal notes. Um, I've been very, very busy in the last couple of weeks in learning C++ because uh, my youngest son Edward is taking a C++ course and he uh, he's just not really getting it as a <laughs> he's, he's not a a uh, you know I, I think it's the effort he needs to put in more effort to learn it but anyway his dad decided to look at all his powerpoints from classes and so on and basically learn C++. When I was doing a lot of programming, it was things like BASIC and Fortran and Pascal, um, certainly not C++. So I'm actually having quite a bit of fun um, doing code for C++, but it's been taking a bit of time to get my, you know, it's sort of a crash course for me, you know, learn it in a couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, right now I'm looking at data structures and pointers and linked lists and stuff and and also uh, doing some programming for some games and uh, you know it's starting to get there it's starting to sink in for me but it's it's a lot of it's a lot of work but it, you know it's interesting I actually forgot how much I enjoy programming and it's a good skill maybe I can add C++ on my uh, CV um, you know uh, based on learning learning um, learning it uh, to, to help out my uh, son Edward. Um, also been doing a lot of reading. I got a couple, um, I usually like to have a fiction and a non-fiction going at the moment. So the fiction I'm looking at, I'm still reading lots of Stephen King books and uh, lots of people online, I mean a couple forums on Stephen King and lots of people are saying this is a book, Lissy's story, which is very very difficult for them to read. Some people just can't you know, Stephen King fans can't get into it, and uh, you know, I, I'm very much enjoying it, but it's a bit, it's a bit strange, uh, very, very strange story. And I ordered and just got the uh, new Climate War book, brand new book from by Michael Mann. So I'm actually the fight to take back our planet. So you know, I'm very interested to read it, and uh, I'm sure I'll cover uh, a lot of the contents on. Uh, some future videos. So let's get right into um, talking about the uh, ice, or, or I'll do it shortly after I discuss some, some other things first. Some of the future topics for videos, and, and always, you know, I'm very interested in people's uh, suggestions for new videos. Um, so this is my uh, website, uh, paulbeckwith.net, so please check it out. And uh, you know, this was a um, this was a rant uh, where I, you know, I walked around Ottawa in a snowstorm and talked about how global average temperatures in 2020 reached a record high of 1.55 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial, where you define pre-industrial to be 1750. Okay, and I, this is very key because you know that you you hear lots of talk about what can we keep it below 1.5 or two. Well, look, we've already passed 1.5 if you really look at the proper pre-industrial uh, definition, which is, uh, you know, what the 1.5 and 2 degree guard bands were, were initially based on. So I just don't understand the, the baseline shift. I think it's fraudulent. 
Um, this is my uh, this is my Twitter at Paul H Beckwith. Please please follow me and send me personal messages and stuff. I'm very responsive to uh, things that I get on Twitter. I probably use Twitter more than anything else these days. Although I st I'm starting to use Facebook a bit more. You know that's that was my staple before. So this is what I'm going to talk about. Uh, global ice loss is accelerating at a record rate. And uh, also, um, this is my, um, okay, so, so this is, uh, this is my uh, Facebook page, and I just got a message. Tomorrow morning at 10, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be going on a two-hour uh, show all about climate change, and I will post the link for viewers. So if you go to, if you go on Facebook and you look for the World Talent Economy Forum, tomorrow's topic is climate change in the 21st century. So it's the World Talent Economy Forum at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. There's gonna be a two hour session with a number of different panelists, including me, on climate change in the 21st uh, century. Okay, so um, also I want to point out that just today uh, U.S. President Biden has made some pretty exceptional executive orders just today to address climate change. And these are quite awesome and it may well be worth a whole separate video to, to talk about them, but I'll talk about a few things. So this is the uh, link fact sheet. Okay, so these are executive orders, executive actions to tackle the climate crisis in the US and abroad, create jobs, restore scientific integrity across the federal government. Okay, so I may talk about, I, I highly recommend that you have a look at this, um, but these executive orders are basically to look at, at uh, things that the US does through a climate lens um, to center the climate crisis in US foreign policy and national security Consideration. So the order establishes climate considerations as an essential element of U.S. foreign policy. Um, it builds on the Paris Agreement and implements it. Um, the President Biden will host the Leaders Climate Summit um, in April on Earth Day. Um, there is going to be a major economies forum to underscore the administration's commitment to elevating climate in U.S. foreign policy. A new position, of course, uh, the Special Presidential Envoy for Climate, John Kerry. He'll have, there'll be a seat at the National Security Council. Um, basically, the U.S. nationally determined contribution, how to reach that commitment on emissions reductions under the Paris Agreement, how that will be implemented, you know, many, many other steps. So basically, a whole of government approach to the climate crisis. Whatever government does, whatever they, whatever they plan and implement, it's to use a look at it through a climate crisis lens, establish the National Climate Task Force, getting leaders across 21 federal agencies and departments to enable a whole of government approach to combating the climate crisis. For example, lever the federal government's footprint and buying power to lead by example. You know, and any time, you know, there's, there's goals for building back better jobs, um, you know, they will look at the carbon pollution uh, from them and uh, in, in consider them in, in new uh, industries that are, that are pushed and advanced. Um, increase the resilience of facilities across the federal government um, and pause on any new oil and gas leases and basically eliminate fossil fuel subsidies, look, looking at that. You know, there's all kinds of things in here. Um, so anyway, I probably, I'll have to get, this is a summary. I'll probably get the original documents and, uh, you know, have a look at it. Maybe, maybe discuss things. So anyway, you can have a look at the rest of this thing. Maybe I should have done this whole video on, on this, but this is pretty impressive. Um, and also, um, it, it, so that'll be a future video. And also I'll be talking about, uh, some work from Peter Carter, a colleague of mine. We gave a lot of presentations at the last uh, COP in 
Madrid, Spain. We had daily sessions um, that were sort of in parallel with, uh, you know, Stuart Scott's uh, sessions with, uh, with, um, uh, um, okay, at the at the COP. So this is uh, one of the things. Uh, of course, I've talked a lot about feedbacks in the past. So there's enormous sources of global surface heating amplifying feedbacks, including tipping points. So these are all sort of, you may recognize this map. I showed this many years ago. And these are components of the Earth's climate system that are, can have possible tipping points. So already tipped or close to tipping Arctic summer sea ice, the Greenland ice sheets up there melt will greatly increase, you know, with all of the tremendous Arctic warming that's been going on. The, um, the Amazon forest, rainforest, uh, basically, you know, getting less and less rainfall, having many drought years, and the rainforest will um, be exposed to pests and get weakened uh, with less rainfall and lots of it will burn. And then the question is, is has the climate, will trees be able to grow back or will it turn into a savanna, you know, like or grasslands with the occasional tree, that sort of thing. Okay, um, loss of wetlands there. Antarctic ice sheets, uh, you know, question mark. Permafrost has an internal heat generation tipping point. Um, the models on, on the individual Arctic tipping points, they don't account for cascading effects or inter-reinforcing effects. Um, it's possible that today's committed locked in higher global surface temperature increase would trigger all or many of these, these tipping points. Okay, um, other, so the main tipping points here, the Arctic summer sea ice loss of albedo, right? Lose the ice, more, there's more solar energy absorbed, less reflected. Uh, snow loss in the far north, that loss of cooling because it reflects away a lot of sunlight. So that snow loss on land, that's mostly in the, um, in the spring. Greenland ice sheet, loss of cooling, right? The Greenland ice sheet. Once we lose the Arctic sea ice, all that's left is the Greenland ice sheet. The center of cold will be the center of Greenland. It's about 73 degrees north. So the, you can think of the jet stream circulating around the center of Greenland as opposed to around the North Pole. So not only do the jet streams slow down and become wavier and become stuck, but their center of rotation will also shift and I've talked about this uh, for many years. This isn't published and this isn't um, well known to scientists, but it just seems perfectly logical to me that that will happen. Um, and of course, the slowing and the waviness and sticking of the jet stream results in an increase in frequency, severity, and duration of extreme weather events. Um, so also the uh, subarctic wetlands, um, you know, the methane production as the permafrost thaws and the, the bacteria can break down the um, organic material. And if it's in wet under water, you get methane produced, lack of oxygen. And with oxygen, you get CO2 produced. The boreal forests, we're getting huge numbers of fires in the far north, producing, producing lots of CO2. So boreal forests in North America and Asia. This is the Udoma permafrost, which I've talked about. Uh, also methane clathrates that are on the seafloor, below the seafloor, um, are a huge problem on the continental shelves in the far north. Um, wetlands, wetlands uh, here. Uh, so permafrost methane, CO2, nitrous oxide, subsea floor methane, tropical wetlands, Antarctic ice sheet, loss of cooling. So there's all of these possible regions with all of these tipping points, and they're not considered. Now, Peter's done a huge number of slides. This is the Global Risks Report 2021 from the World Economic Forum, and it shows that extreme weather is first, climate action failure is second, human environmental damage third, uh, fourth is infectious diseases. Look at this, coronavirus, only, only the fourth. And biodiversity loss is number five. And, you know, that's the last three years. It's been that sort of thing. The first and second are the same. And third, you know, natural disasters here. Okay, so it, I guess it'll be the next video when I talk about the global ice loss. Thanks.